Hello, Hollywood Times viewers. Judy Shields here. I'm so excited to welcome singer, writer, actress, author, and best known as an original member of the Fifth Dimension and six-time Grammy winner, Florence LaRue. Hi, Florence. Hi, Judy. I'm so glad to be with you today. So glad you could join us. We're here. I'm so excited to talk about your book, which I have right here and right here, dog tagged. <laughs> So your new book is called Grace in Your Second Act, A Guide to Aging Gracefully. Wow, what an amazing book this is. Thank you so much for writing this book. Thank you. Have you had a chance to read it yet? Yes, I have. Oh. It's inspiring. You have, I see all these chapters you have. There's actually 27 of them, I believe. Yes, with the last thoughts. I always like to ask about the chapters, like, you know, the titles of the chapter where I see each of yours is like embracing aging is like the first one. And hey, people, we we are blessed that we get to age, you know, that's right. You know, when it's like when we're younger, it seems like all the kids are trying to be older. Then when we get older, we're trying to be younger. <laughs> Isn't that so true? <laughs> so I'm trying to encourage people to embrace aging and don't fear it. As a matter of fact, um, when I was talking to some people, they say, oh, don't say old. I said, look, you know, some some of the people, they, they say mature. I said, some of the people I know are just plain old and not mature. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with getting older because it's going to happen. But we have to learn how to enjoy it, make the most of it. And still, as I tell people, live, don't just exist. Exactly. I mean, we just... You know, there's people that are living to be past 100 years old. And yes. I, that's my goal. It's like I want to, you know, take care of myself. And so let's just start talking about some of these chapters, like embracing aging. And then I like number two is the attitude. I mean, isn't that the truth? You know, attitude has a lot to do with it. Uh, someone was telling me that uh, it was a country, little country town. And every day this lady would walk past the, the uh, this old house and this old man would be sitting on the porch smoking a cigarette, you know, and drinking a beer. And he just, just seemed really happy. And he walked by and every day he'd be, she said, what is your secret? And you, I see you sitting there, you know, you're old and you're, you look like you're happy. Uh, he says, well, every day, you know, I smoke a pack of cigarettes and I drink, you know, at least a couple of beers. And she said, well, how old are you? He said, 21. <laughs> so in, in other words, he wasn't an old man, but because of his, actions he looked like an old man <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is so true i mean you you have to start out as soon as you can you know we we as parents grandparents we make sure our kids you know take their showers make sure they put lotion on their body i mean i have grandsons they're like grandma i go it's really important to put lotion on you believe me you'll you'll thank me when you get older it's just not for us gals <laughs> <laughs> right. He'll, he'll appreciate it when he gets older. <laughs> right. Exactly. So and then chapter three is confidence. That is so hard to come by. <laughs> yes, you know, so many people um, have excuses for not being healthy or not being enjoying older age. And a lot of it is a lack of confidence. You know, oh, I can't do anything in my old age because I'm too short or because I'm too this or too that. It, it, you know, that's not a, that's just what it is, an excuse. You're never too old to begin. I started doing um, marathons in my 60s. What? Yes. Wow. I started, I, I wanted, to, I always have been involved in some kind of physical activity. And um, I wanted to do something, uh, something fun. And I read that the Red Cross was teaching people how to run marathons and it was going to be helping the Red Cross. So um, I got involved in it and I really enjoyed it. And I, had, I met two people who became very good friends, one my age and one much younger. And we ended up doing about, oh, I don't know, six marathons. Now we didn't run because, you know, we had to be realistic. We're just starting this. So we, don't, we want to treat our bodies well. So we, re we walked and uh, we did half marathons. It was so much fun. And that's, that's the whole, I think that's the secret. Find something that you enjoy doing, not not just because someone else is doing. Because I enjoy marathons, doesn't mean someone else will. You might enjoy swimming or you know some other activity, but be active. That's this. That's the essential word. Be active. 
Yeah, that's the key to to everything. You know, who who wants to just sit around and be a couch potato? There's too much going on outside to take you outside. I just recently bought a trampoline for my kids and I, oh. my grandkids, and I'm out there every day when I get off work just for 10, 15 minutes, you know, just dumping around so I can, you know, help out with everything. And I love it. Oh, that sounds like fun. Now I walk every day. I walk two miles every day. I used to do five, but I had two hip replacements and one knee replacement. And my doctor told me, slow down, even though you feel good, you know, slow down. So now I just do two miles every day, but I enjoy it because I do it first thing in the morning. The air is clear and I uh, see in the summer, I see the birds and the flowers. It's just, I watch the leaves turn in the autumn. It's really very enjoyable for me. And I prefer that rather than going to a gym. Oh yeah. I love walking too. And, and I'm in the downtown LA area and, and I used to ah. walk quite a bit, but it's been a little bit scarier, you know, or I don't go out as much, you know, because it's, it's kind of hard, but I do try and walk. Uh, we have a dog, so it's always good to take the dog out too. So. Oh, all right. And you know, there's nothing wrong going to the gym if that's what you like. It's just that I dislike nature. And uh, as a matter of fact, I am looking for a yoga class because oh. stretching is also very good for us at, at any age, actually. And I would like to learn some yoga. Yeah, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. A couple of uh, chapters four and five talk about style and you talk about some style icons because uh, it's like Diane Keaton is my favorite. I love her. Really? Oh, now, oh, I think Audrey Hepburn is one yeah. of mine. Yeah. So style is pretty, pretty important, too, at, at any age, right? <laughs> and it's also something that's very personal. You know, you may like uh, like I like classic clothes. Because I, I have clothes that I have worn for 20 years. Wow. My mother always taught me buy, buy one good suit one, or one good dress instead of about 10 that are you know, going to fall apart. But I find that with the classics, they have lasted me over the years. And it's, it's a style that I prefer. Every once in a while, you know, I buy something fun to kind of, um, you know, jazz it up. But I like the classic styles myself. Exactly. A couple other chapters are about jewelry and hats. Oh, I'm a hat person. You I'm are. a hat person. And I think um, I think my, it's my mother's fault because when I was younger, I had to wear a hat and gloves to church. And now I have such a collection of hats that I really I really enjoy. Also, I'm not real good with hair. So instead of doing my hair, I will just pull my hair back and put on a hat or a cap. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the easy way out, right? <laughs> I like this one chapter 10 talked about dressing for the big occasion. You must have had oh. a lot of those. Say, I'm sorry, say it again. You must have had a lot of big occasions to dress. For. Oh, yes. And it's it's I like dressing up. As I said, even as a child, I enjoy dressing up. And some people, not all, everyone does. You know, I noticed that especially in California, we're very uh, much more casual than the East Coast. But that's fine. You know, but just find a style that you enjoy. If it's jeans, then enjoy jeans. But um, by the way, I, I finally bought a pair of jeans. I only wore one, bought one pair. I like dresses. They make me feel feminine. And um, but it's hard to find these days yeah. because most of the styles are suits and pants, uh, especially for women, which I can see in the East Coast because it's cold. But I really like dresses. And uh, as I said, it's hard to find because a lot of them are too short mm -hmm. or too low. <laughs> and now that I'm a certain age, I do wear longer sleeves because I haven't been doing my exercises and my arms don't look like Michelle Obama's. <laughs> yeah, I know. I keep trying and they just don't work. <laughs> I don't know what she <laughs> it does. It works if you stick with it. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> oh, chapter 11. One of my favorites, makeup and skincare because you're just radiant. You know, <laughs> I find that that's one of the biggest mistakes that most mature women make is wearing too much makeup. Uh, they, it's like they're putting on makeup to hide whatever, and it only makes them look older. You know, the makeup will get stuck in the in the wrinkles. I find that sometimes I'll even put on makeup and then wipe wipe most of it off because it makes me look fresher and and, and uh, more youthful. So and again, instead of trying to look younger, have an attitude, a youthful attitude, and use what God has given you. For instance, I like eye makeup because I think that's one of my best features. So I may wear eye makeup. I don't uh, often don't even wear a base. 
Um, but I, I like my eye, eye makeup. Yeah, it, it, it looks beautiful. <laughs> it looks really good. It looks really. Well, good. I'm not for stage. I wear a lot of eye makeup. For normally, I don't. I don't wear anything. Maybe a little eyeliner, and you actually look. You look younger. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Uh, next one is talks about hands. We everyone sees our hands. That's a get dead giveaway of age. Hands. If you don't take care of your hands. Um, you need to really use that lotion. There are certain lotions that are specifically for uh, dry skin that you should use. And if you if you really want soft hands and you feel like going through the process, you can wear gloves to bed. Now me, I'm too lazy to go through that, but I do try to put lotion on each time I wash my hands. I do. I did buy one of those paraffin wax, and I really do like doing that. Did it work? Yes, it's been it's been doing pretty good i really like it it's, it's so funny good. because once i brought a man on stage to dance with a, with the group when we were performing and he said oh your hands are soft and i thought oh i'm gonna keep using my lotion <laughs> <laughs> it's great you know we, we find ourselves holding our own hands you know because it feels so good <laughs> oh. I, I find my hands are getting drier though i do drink yes. my water but uh i notice that they are drier than i than i like so i have to step up my lotion yeah, I think I've noticed that too. That's why I got that paraffin wax. It really does help. Ah, really. so I'm going to try that. that. Yeah, you'll have to try that one. Uh, chapter 14 is diet. That's the most important, isn't it? Our diets. Yes, and you know, when people hear the word diet, all of a sudden, oh, I don't want to die. But diet only means a way of eating. Yeah. Some people have to diet to gain weight. Yeah. Most people think if you say diet, you're talking about trying to lose weight. No. A diet is just a way of eating, and everyone needs different things. We all need the vitamins and natural, uh, I believe, natural foods. I eat organic, mm -hmm. and people say, oh, well, that's too expensive. Uh, I feel like there are two things I will spend money on. One is shoes, the correct fitting shoes, yes. and the other is food, because I, I'd rather pay the, uh, the grocer than the doctor. Yes. You know? And Good it's very one. important that you eat and get the vitamins that you need. You may need more vitamin D, where someone else may need more vitamin C. Yeah. And so you need to find out what your body needs and to feed that. Yeah. And everything that you eat, what's it going to do? Is it going to put on fat or is it going to make you healthy and give you energy? Exactly. You know, it's, I don't know, you know it's a word they use is diet, but it's just a lifestyle of living right, so live right. longer. And one of the most harmful things for us is sugar. Yes. And sugar is in everything, even food. I mean, even vegetables, yes. because it's so addictive. I used to be addicted to sugar. I mean, I couldn't eat one jelly bean. I'd have to eat the whole bag. But wow. thank goodness I've overcome it. But sugar really uh, uh, causes, not, not doesn't cause, but it helps cancer and other, and other things also, diabetes. You know, so you have to be careful what you eat. Read the labels because some things may not have sugar, but they have artificial sugar oh, and sweet. other harmful things in them. Yeah. So how, how did you take care of, because that's one of the things I struggle with is, is sugar. And, and how did you take care of that? How was the one thing that you, you know, did to keep away from well, it? Of course, I always pray over everything. I pray for God to give me strength and give me uh, the strength to resist yeah. sugar, which I knew was bad for me. And I started slowly because if you all of a sudden cut it out, you're going to crave it. Okay. I used to I like haagen ice cream. <laughs> oh my goodness. I would eat a pint at a sitting. Oh no. So what I did is I had a cheat day. Sunday, I could eat anything I wanted. And the rest of the week, I really cut, out, cut down on sugar. Not only sugar, but also high carbs like oh, yeah. starches. Yes. And after a while, I slowly lost my appetite for it, and I don't crave it anymore. And then I could eat a little bit and, and not want more. But now I don't even do that because I don't want to start up that craving for the sugar. Yeah. And also, I watched the things, the ingredients of things I was eating to see if there was sugar in them, because sometimes maybe that's what would be feeding my uh, addiction to sugar. Yeah. But it, it takes time, but you can do it. All right, cool. I'm... Thank you. You're my inspiration. <laughs> <laughs>
And when you say when you eat something with sugar, I think of the harm it's doing to your body. Yeah, right. Because it's oh, oh I don't want to get. I have a friend who lost her 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 leg because of diabetes. I think about that, you know. Yeah, that's true, and it runs in my my on my mom's side of the family. Most ah. of her family has passed from complications of that, so it's just like oh, you know, it's that haunting thing. And I said, I. I got to watch it. I want to be live to be over a hundred. So, but you, but you can have some sugar, for instance, eat, eat uh, fruits, fruits, grapes, yeah. um, yeah. apples, you know, you, you substitute. And after a while, you know, that, that will fulfill your desire for the sugar. Yeah. That's what, that's what I'm changing my eating habits. So it start, yeah. starts with fruit. One of the big things here is that I have difficulties with is sleep. How, how do you, how does I have difficulty with sleep also because I'm so, I'm so active and my mind is, is really <laughs> uh, going at a fast rate, but I find that um, if I have a schedule and, and I know that at this time, let's say nine o'clock, that's the yeah. time I start preparing for bed and you get your body used to that schedule. Also, if you have to, there are natural things you can take uh, like melatonin and things okay. like that to help you sleep. Yeah. That's, that's also really stop watching television. Yes. At nine o'clock it's off, you know, so that's what I've right. been doing and, and maybe trying to read books, you know, to kind right. of, I have good things, positive things to help me to go mm -hmm. to sleep. So and I'll always go to sleep with something peaceful, something joyful. Don't don't watch the news before oh, you go yeah. to sleep. <laughs> no, I always do my praying before I go to sleep too. Yes, so it helps yes. me to just sleep. thank God for another day of good <laughs> yeah. health and uh, yes. and peaceful sleep. Yes, that's great advice. And there are um, also apps you can put on your phone. Oh yeah, like Calm that yes. app or something uh -huh. too. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have one of those machines that plays. Cr I like crickets. Isn't that something? Oh, okay. And there's I'm one, I, I used to play one that, the sound of rain. Yes. That's very, yes. that's very soothing. And also different smells like, uh, scents, I should say, a lavender. Yeah. It's very calming. Hear. Yeah. Yeah. And my daughter-in-law has me drinking, uh, uh, tea with lavender, you know, mm -hmm. she said, drink that. Chamomile and lather. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really good. So it's kind of helping. <laughs> so let's see, um, stress, who likes to talk about stress, but you have that in here. <laughs> uh, I don't even like to talk. Stress can actually cause physical illnesses. Yeah. I know I've, I've experienced that, you mm. know, worrying about the, worrying about things you can't do anything about. Yes, you, I know. Right. You know, so you, you really have to be, I tell you, my spiritual life is so important to me. I mean, I just don't know what people do without God in their life, but it has, it's so important to me because it really helps with stress. Because I do lead a stressful life, you know, in, in the entertainment field, you're traveling, you know, if your flight's going to be on time and the traffic and things like that, you cannot worry about it. instead of worrying about being on time for a flight, leave earlier. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's going to be traffic. So yeah. give yourself time to get to the airport and relax. Maybe read while you wait for your flight or, or whatever is comfortable for you to do. Yeah, I hear you there. Um, also, I like the one about friends. I mean, what is life without friends, right? Oh, friends are so necessary. Um, and I don't mean friends on the, on the internet. Those right. 100 <laughs> friends you have, those are not even acquaintances. Those are just people that know your email. <laughs> exactly. But uh, I have, I get, I have, I guess you can count my friends actually on one hand, my, my yeah. really good friends. And most of them have been friends for 40, 50 years. Oh, bless your heart. I am still very close to a young lady that I went to school with in Pennsylvania. We've been friends. Uh, uh, and whenever I'm on the East Coast, I visit her, I stay with her. Uh, I remember the first time I went to see her and she had just, she was divorced and she just had a little apartment hmm. and I had to sleep on the couch. She says, oh, you're so, I says, no, 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 I'm, not so, I'm your friend, you know, and I want to be with you. So I'll, if I have to, you know, I'll, but no matches on the floor. We're friends. Friend, a friend is someone you can call at two o'clock in the morning if you have yeah. to just talk with someone. And I have a couple of friends like that, and I'll tell you, it's just been wonderful. Well, they are a blessing. God's blessing. Especially, you know, I, I'm 81 and I live alone. I'm not married. So my friends are very important to me. Wow. That's great. Friends are the best. Um, here's another good one. Learn something new every day. I try. 
I try to, that's how you keep growing. Uh, another one thing that I'm really learning is this internet. <laughs> oh, I tell you. Now, that's what gave me stress. <laughs> I, but I'm determined to, to learn how to do all of the, uh, the things necessary to communicate through the internet. And I have young people come in and teach me because I, I know you can look it up and they have different uh, <laughs> videos. I need somebody in person that, that will take their time and say, oh, no, Florence, you do this, you push this button, you do that. So, and I find that you have to make it fun. I, as a matter of fact, I have a teaching credential and I like teaching. I have people come in and teach me so I can learn slowly and um, accurately. Wow. Yeah, that's that's the way it should be. You know, these younger generations, that's why I have my grandkids. Grandma, did you, did yeah. you do it this way? I said, okay, well, <laughs> all right. So show me the right way. <laughs> all about those young grandkids. Uh, one of the last ones that I like to read about was the brain, because that's something that we need, don't we? <laughs> and, you know, we have to feed our brain. We, we really don't use, I, I think we only use about, I think it said 10% of our brain because we don't we're not interested in learning and expanding for instance you can sit and watch comedy tv all day and it's fun you'll enjoy it but yeah. how about watching a game uh show yeah. uh, that's why i like the game channel i like um yeah. wheel, wheel of fortune is one <laughs> of my favorites <laughs> me too because i sit there and i play the game with them you know you say but you have to find games you enjoy this backgammon chess mm -hmm. all kinds of games that you can play that will keep your brain active, especially as you mature. And a, a lot of uh, older people, if their bone, if their body doesn't allow them to be active physically, they can get on the phone. They can play games on the uh, computer yeah. or television, you know, but just keep active, do, do, <laughs> do uh, crossroad puzzles even. Yeah, exactly. I go play bingo. <laughs> and and feed right. And feed the brain. Yeah. You know, there's certain foods that are good for the brain and there's certain foods like sugar that are not. Yeah. So read up on, you know, you can Google it uh, and find out what's going to feed your brain and make it active, keep it alive. You know, all time here is just is so rampant yeah. these days. Yeah. And I do believe that a lot of it has to do with the pe foods we eat that have pesticides. Oh, and yeah. um, things that we're fe feeding our body that are not good for the brain. Yeah, it's good advice. So what was your inspiration for writing this book? Uh, there were several things. The one thing was I still perform, as I said, at 81, and I don't just stand and sing, but I also can hit those high notes and I do the choreography. So after the show, men and women would come up to me, what do you do? You know, how do you stay? So active at your age, you know, oh, I wish I could do it. I want to be like you. I said, no, don't be like me. Be the best you that you can be. So that encouraged me to write the book. And also during the holidays, I would visit um, senior homes. Oh. And many times I would see seniors lying in bed. And a lot of them unnecessar unnecessarily because they didn't take care of their health. Mm. And had they taken better care of their health, they could have at least been home or been active uh, mentally, yeah. but because they didn't. So I want to encourage seniors, first of all, it's never too late to start. Yes. As you said, we <laughs> learn something new every day. And I want to encourage young people to start. They prepare themselves financially for their uh, senior years, but they don't prepare themselves spiritually or emotionally. You know, it takes all three of those things mentally, physically, and spiritually to keep yourselves active and alive and living, not just existing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really good advice. So what are you currently working on? Uh, well, I'm working on, uh, working on promoting the book. I'm also continuing to sing with the fifth dimension. So I'm working on reviving our career. Um, <laughs> we're, we're looking at making a new re record Nice. Or I should say CD, <laughs> or whatever the new uh, terminology new is, will be. Yes. But but recording something new, and um, that that takes a lot of time and planning. So I'm very excited about those two things. I tried to do one or two things well instead of cramming uh, everything into my life at one time. 
Yeah. And also trying to keep in touch with my family and yeah. friends. Very cool. What do you do for the holidays? Thanksgiving's coming and Christmas. What do you do for those? As much as possible, I spend the holidays with family or friends. Um, this, my son has uh, moved because of his work to Louisiana, so I'm looking forward to spending um, Thanksgiving with him. Oh. I haven't decided on Christmas yet. Usually Christmas used to be at my place because I had the most room for everyone. So this Christmas, I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> Well, you'll figure it out, right? Yeah. I wanted to ask you what uh, in all your career, what's been like the best place you remember uh, performing at? Like a oh, highlight for you? That, it, that's difficult to say because each place holds something different. Uh, and any place where the audience is really satisfied and enjoys the show, that makes me happy. However, there's certain um, places that are very memorable because of what they represent. For instance, years ago, the Fifth Dimension uh, performed, uh, we were sponsored by the State Department, the US Depart State Department, oh. to perform in Eastern Europe, which was at that time communist. Mm -hmm. And we went, we went to Poland, Czechoslovakia, Romania, and Turkey. And to experience the lack of freedom was very, very educational. For instance, at one place where we went, there were armed guards with dogs backstage to make sure that after the concert, there was no rioting or anything like that. Well, they were laughing with us, asking for autographs. They were very friendly. But after the concert, the audience rushed the stage. But they wanted to touch us because we were their connection to freedom. It taught me to appreciate what we have in this country. I mean, we have our problems. Yeah. But to me, the freedom that we have here is, is the best place to live. And also performing at the White House was also oh. a very uh, enjoyable. My, my one regret, my one regret in my career is I did not get to perform for o Obama. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> well, there you go. That's too bad. Yeah. Yeah. And I also read that you uh, performed at Disneyland. Did you? Performed there long ago? Oh, oh wow. Well, we formed at Disneyland and Disney World. Disney World. And it was it was an honor to be there be, to perform for be, to know that we have a family oriented show, a show that, you know, people could bring their children to and they could all enjoy. That's I'm very proud of that fact. Yeah. So do you, are you on social media as well? Well, I am and I'm not. <laughs> when I say I am, I have I do have a site and the Fifth Dimension has a site. But I don't go on the, on it often because, yeah. first of all, it's very time consuming. I mean, I see people putting things up. My dog ate this today. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't quite have the time to do that. Yeah. Um, I do look forward to becoming more active, just so uh, friends can know where we're. This mention is yeah. performing and what we're doing. Okay. Yeah, we'll definitely put any links that we find for for you and for for the Fifth Dimension, and we're so glad that you took the time to talk to us today. Uh, here at the Hollywood Times, and we also have a YouTube channel, Hollywood Times official. So uh, we will be putting this up on YouTube for your well, thank you, enjoys. And uh, it's been a, a pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you, and I, I hope you will perform close so that you can come and see our show. Unfortunately, or fortunately, we perform mostly on the East Coast for oh. some reason. I don't know why. So I'm looking for, forward to performing here in California, so our friends can come and see the show live. I will definitely be there when that happens. Just yes. love to see you live. That'll be great. We do appreciate it.